Okay, gentlemen, I gave you your instructions in the dressing room. I'm going to remind you of now is when I say stop, pare. I don't want no punching, no Terry Gopas, okay? Fuera limpio, give me a clean break. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Gentlemen, let's do this. And Mario, this is a fight that both guys have been waiting for for quite a while, but there was a point where it might not happen. We had some problems with Rigondeau. Everything came together as of Monday night. Now they're finally here, but it's something that we're going to have to see how much it really affects either one of them. The fact that it was on and off, on, off again, on and off. And so on. I've never seen a fight flip flop so much. And the, the thing about Rigadiel, to me, he is the most talented fighter with only 10 professional bouts under his belt that I've ever seen. He's extremely dangerous. He looked incredible in his last outing. And he's a very, very patient fighter and always starts off calculated. And he was able to close out the show in a big way last time. So we'll see. He's able to continue on that path. Guillermo Rigandov wearing. Orange and purple trunks, Marroquin with the uh, colors of the Mexican flag and black trunks. Great counter puncher, Rigondeau, two time Olympic champion, could have become a three time gold medal champion. However, he defected in 2007. That's why he didn't compete for Cuba in the Beijing Olympics. But he's definitely made his name known. I'll tell you what, Jaime, I, I couldn't be a bigger fan of Rigan Diaw, just being a Pearson fan of the sport. Such a talented individual. The, if there is a knock on him, because technically speaking, he's so fundamentally sound, it's the fact that he is so calculated and he relies so heavily on his skills that he doesn't necessarily want to go for the knockout right away to uh, much to the dismay of many of the fans. However, many of them have commented that's a beautiful left counter, as we can see why he doesn't have to press the action so much. That's one of the things that Marco King is going to have to contend with throughout this bout. Once again, that left hand landing for the Chacal. One of the things that Marco King told us is that when it's a righty-lefty confrontation, usually the orthodox fighter, the righty, tries to be on the outside of the left foot of the left uh, lefty and tries to move that way. He's going to try and do something different tonight. He's going to try and move to his right and throw the left hook. He says that that's been giving him some success in training camp. We'll see if that actually is successful against Rigondeau, who connects again with the left hand. We'll see if he's able to translate it. I, I like the idea of following up with the left hook, but going to his right, you're right in the vicinity of that laser sharp counter left hand that Rigondeau has been able to land so far. Juan Manuel Marquez has done such a beautiful job of showing a blueprint on how to fight a southpaw, obviously with Manny Pacquiao when there's a fourth fight coming up. And there's another good, beautiful uppercut from Guillermo Riondo. Last 10 seconds of the round. Good first round by Rigondo. It was about Guillermo Riondo. He said he started training for Rigondeau, then it was Oscar Gonzalez, then Alejandro Lopez, finally back to Rigondeau. But that's who he was prepared for mentally. Well, he's got him. He's got him, and it's one of the cases of be careful what you wish for. I really enjoy getting the opportunity to see this guy apply his trade any opportunity he gets. And there's so much excitement that could be made in these in this weight class right now. Of course, with Juanito Gomer, Abner Morris, and I'll tell you, Guillermo Rigondeau is at the, at the uh, top of that list for me. Mauro King considers Rigondeau the best 122-pounder. And Mauro King, by the way, is a really skilled, good fighter in his own right. And if he's able to figure out the puzzle that is Rigondeau, then he'll do major things to his career. Yeah, Mauro King, only one loss in 23 fights, 15 KOs. He's had uh, also an extensive amateur career, probably not as illustrious as Rigondeau. He pretty much won every single amateur event he entered. Like we said, two-time Olympic gold medalist. 
over 245 <laughs> amateur fights. Uh, the, 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 the amateur career is just unparalleled. Unparalleled. And that's why part of the frustration with the management with with a fighter like Jim Dow is, is, first of all, Cubans have always had a difficult time in the marketplace here in the fight game for whatever reason. But here you got have a guy who's really special, and if you are able to make certain quality key fights and allow him to shine, I think he can have the opportunity to uh, really be a star in this sport. Maroking said that he needed to be aggressive against Rigandau, but it's been the champ who's been aggressive in the first couple of rounds. Another beautiful left counter from Diego Rigandau. And again, calculated, extremely patient, very confident, excellent defense. And Monarchy might have to go to plan B after this round, because trying to stay at the end of his punches and counterpunch a counterpuncher is not working so far. No, definitely not. Rigandau has been standing in front of Marroquin. So far, but Marroquin has not been able to do much. Great left hand there. Another beautiful counter by Rigandau. Almost at the end of the second round. Another good round, round for the champ. Rigandau having his way. Let's keep it going. I mean, one of the things, I don't know why it makes me laugh, but looking at uh, Rigandau, he would be the ultimate poker player. His expression never changes on his face. Whether he's excited or flustered or any sort of trouble, he has the stoic expression in that of just an assassin. Just does not change or give any way uh, at any sort of facial expression. Such a well school fighter could not come from a higher pedigree and really showing what he's made of tonight against a very talented fighter in his own way. Oh, absolutely. The jab also working for Rigandau. Marroquin's face starting to show a little bit more redness. And we're only at the beginning of the third round. I mentioned earlier Juan Manuel Marquez was being one of the best counter punchers ever and, and having such a, a similar style to Rigandau, but a little more active now as he's gotten older. Um, Orlando Salido has done a wonderful job too against South Paz in his previous two fights against Lopez. Totally different style as far as Bobby and Wigan, but Marroquin is getting at the point where he's going to have to change up the strategy. A little more head movement, a little more looping type punches, starting to attack the body a little bit more. Because so far, it's not working. No, Marroquin also, he says he's he's very patient. He likes to study a guy first, but, oh. Little success, oh. nice shot. And Robert Bird has to go in and separate the two. Probably one of the best shots by Marroquin was when they were in the clinch. And he got a little aggressive, and he's got, and that's what he needs to do, is turn a little more into a fight. You don't want to play chess with the chess master. And that was another solid left by Rigandau. Sort of stopped Marroquin in his tracks. But Jaime, that's the fight that Marroquin needs to fight. And he's getting a little more aggressive, and he's looping those punches a little bit more. He can't show the champ that much respect. Exactly. And good on him for making an adjustment. Marokin trying to land the uppercut. Rigandau moving to his right. Oh, Beautiful nice right hand. right hand by Marokin. Straight right. That lead right also works well against Southpaws, and he hasn't been trying that much so far, Mario, but that's something that could benefit him if he, if he does well with it from here on out. Well, this has been his best round, Marroquin, so far. He had a nice punch out of the clinch. The right hand has found a home, so maybe he'll be able to gain a little momentum and make this fight interesting. So far, that's straight. Lead right. And right away, Rigandau starts off by throwing the jab. Trying to make sure that Marroquin knows that he's the one in charge. 
Corner got a little upset at Rigandau for losing a little focus. And maybe when you're waiting for the right counter punch, you get an aggressive fighter who gets clever in there, and it could be the worst for wear for you. Nice body uh, work nice by body work there, yeah. One of the few combinations thrown by Rigandau so far. He's been relying on that straight left. And the jab now, the nice right hook. Starting to move a little bit better, Rigandau. He was a little bit static in the first couple rounds. And, and you know, if you don't, if you keep showing him the respect, he'll fight like that for 12 rounds. The frustrating thing, being a fan of his, Rigandau's, is you know if he lets his hands go, not only will it be that much more of an exciting fight, but it, it'll be that much more effective for him. And that was a beautiful left counter and a nice work to the body from Rigandau. Rigandau starting to throw, a little bit more letting his hands go. Maybe realizing that Marroquin is here to stay. He showed him that he can do a little bit more in the third round. And, so. and Jay Rigandau has heard the, the, the whispers and then the knock on him that he doesn't do enough maybe to entertain the fans. And he can pick it up a little bit. His last three opponents have ended in knockouts, so this is actually really active for him. Rigandau measuring Maroki. Doing a little bit more moving now. Marroquin being more aggressive with straight right hands, and I think he needs to keep going a straight right to the body, followed by a straight right to the head. And he's pressuring. Nice left hook there by Marroquin. Marroquin finding a home now with that counter left hook. It's looping, he's bobbing with it and coming over the top. Due to a result of Rigandau holding his hand so low. Again, there the one two by Rigandau. Whoa, very quick hands there, the uppercut. And now another straight left and another. When he wants to connect, he can do it pretty much with whichever weapon he can. He can do it at will, and he does it with some pop. -up. And Marroquin's corner, I thought, giving him excellent instruction in that don't let him be first. You have to be a little bit more aggressive. And watch the counters when you're just standing there. Excellent, and excellent advice. Let's see if he adjusts. Breaking down the purple and orange. Marroquin in the black. Oh, and a beautiful, beautiful counter that he sort of pumped fake time at and still caught him with that laser position. Robert Bird giving him the standing aim. Back to the center of the ring. And let's see what Rigandau does now. Like you mentioned, the knock on him is that when he had a fighter in trouble, he really didn't go after him. Let's see if now he tries to look for that knockout. And you know, Jaime, this, what I really like about Rigandel right now is he had a round where he got caught, got a little bit lazy, and he responded like a champion, aggressively and in a really exciting manner, making the adjustments he needed to make. Rigandel as well using the jab to the body, now with the straight left. Again, with the straight left to the body. Marroquin can't get out of the way of those punches. Marroquin getting away with what was working for him two rounds ago, and that is those straight rights in the bobbing and weaving and coming with the left hook, the wide left hook. Rigandau as well moves so well. He takes a couple of quick steps back, and then Marroquin is completely out of distance and cannot find his range. Marroquin, I'm impressed. He must be in excellent shape. He recovered quickly after being knocked down because he got caught right on the button. Marroquin trying to apply some pressure here on Rigandau after being dropped here in the fifth round. That punch may be a little low by Marroquin, but Rigandau doesn't say anything, and there's a good right hook by Rigandau. 
Bringing down really letting his punches go now. And with a lot of a lot of power and bad authorities, and there's another, there's another laser sharp right here left counter. And finally, Marikin letting his hands go. But it's difficult to connect against such a quick opponent. Not only does he move well, great waist movement, Mario. Great waist movement, great free, uh, foot movement. And he's got sort of a Floyd Mayweather-esque defense as well. And he's a southpaw, so he's got a lot of issues in front of him. Coming up at the end of this fifth round. You can see the swelling around Marroquin's right eye, also the cut. Those are due to those quick lefts, straight lefts by Rigandau that have landed so often tonight here against Marroquin. Probably the best left hand counter punch in the business right now, especially in the lighter weight classes. Nice right hand by Marroquin. Monaghan's halfway to the point of the fight right now, and it's like a tale of two halves. He was clearly getting out blocks his first couple of rounds, made a couple of nice adjustments, started leading with more right hands, had looping left hooks that were working, but then he ever began to adjust it to the point where he let his hands go and picked up his pace. And now the crowd getting a little frustrated and getting fired up for the main event because they, they want some action. Uh, we will see some action in the main event. Chavez Jr. and Sergio Martinez. But we're also seeing some action here. Guillermo Rigandau gets caught there with a nice straight right hand by Guillermo Mar by Roberto Marroquin. And once again, he can't find the range. Marroquin, the foot movement, the waist movement, and just the overall savviness of Rigandau in the ring makes it complicated for any fighter. I mean, this is about as crafty an individual as they come. This crowd fired up, excited, here early, which is so nice to see. So many times the crowd showing up closer to the main event, but this is such a great part that Top Rank put on. Action fights from beginning to end. And it's going to be a packed house for the main event. A new record here at Thomas and Max Center. 19,186 will be ready for Chavez Jr. and Sergio Martinez. But right now we have Guillermo Rigando pretty much giving Guillermo, uh, Roberto Marroquin, sorry, a boxing lesson so far. The champ doing pretty much whatever he's wanted to do inside that square circle. And a nice, beautiful shot straight to the midsection. Marroquin is game. Sometimes, you're a little outclassed. Park can only take you so far. Riven down measuring Marroki. Oh, two quick jabs and then a left hook by Rigandau. Almost half the way through this fight for the Super Bantamweight Championship, WBA. Maybe a little stronger, so we'll see how much he rehydrated and how much bigger he enters the ring tonight. And here we go, seventh round here with Rigandau and Roberto Marroquin. Here at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, for the WBA Super Batman Weight Championship. Marroquin in purple and orange. I mean, Rigandau, Marroquin in black. Beautiful, big, wide looping punches. Guillermo Rigandau is throwing. A lot more active. He's coming out this round. Maybe he's trying to close the show a little early. This is a high nice. activity rate for Guillermo Rigandau. Yes. He's throwing a lot more hooks now. Rigandau, and then a straight left to the body. And just quick feet and he's able to get out of any dangerous situation, Mario, with relative ease, Guillermo Rigandau. Not many chinks in his armor, and in the 
in the rare moments where he does get caught, makes nice adjustments and makes you forget about the previous success of the other fighter real quick. Very calculating Brigandau. When he sees the slightest opening, he lets his hands go. And so far, he's been able to connect with the straight left, right hooks, uppercuts, straight to the body, combinations, you name it. Again, there, straight left to the body by Rigondeaux, and one more. Once in a while, we'll see a flurry from Rigondeaux, as we've seen a couple rounds previous to the body, but he pretty much stays with his repertoire of that counter left hand, the looping left hook, and the pawing jab. But hey, it's worked for himself thus far. It's not broke. Don't fix, Don't fix it. it, exactly. And that's another beautiful left counter shot that Monopoly took right on the chin. He must be in excellent position. And the kid's got a set of whiskers because he's really taking some hard stop, shots stop. to me. Robert Burke tells him to watch for the heads. And there, nice exchange between Marroquin and Brigandau. Marroquin needs to do a little bit more of that. Let his hands go. Marroquin cannot believe at this point that the decision could be in his favor. So exactly, Jaime, I agree with you. He needs to let his hands go and just up his game as far as the activity level, the level and be more aggressive. Rigondeaux looking for that opening. He goes downstairs and then up with the uppercut. Here towards the end of the round. The crowd booing because they're showing on the screens some Argentinian fans with their flags. You know, this being uh, Mexican Independence Day weekend, the Mexicans here at the Thomas and Mack Center are not happy to see that. They're not, but I'll tell you what, I'm happy to see such a large uh, contingency of Argentinian fans here. It's great for our sport. It's great for uh, Martinez. It's a healthy rivalry, and hopefully uh, th th this will build off this event. But. Really, really happy to see Thomas and Mac already starting to, to, to get full. And like you mentioned earlier, Jaime, we are part of history. We set a record attendance. So this is great, great night for boxing. The previous record attendance was uh, 1999. The rematch between Holyfield and Lewis. It's a controversial rematch. I remember that. 19,151 fans that night. Here, Guillermo Rigondeau in control against Roberto Marroquin. Marroquin down once already. Only in the third round did he land some solid punches. Other than that, he's been chasing Rigondeau all over the ring, and Rigondeau has been able to connect with that straight left, just like that one, even though that one landed pretty much in the gloves of Roberto Marroquin. Rigondeau can really make a statement tonight. He's able to figure out a way to stop this kid. And I think he has the game plan and obviously the tools to do it. It's just a matter if he wants to be more active. Another straight left that landed on the chin of Marroquin. And you've mentioned it, Mario. This kid can take a punch. He's come in great shape. He's really got a good set of whiskers on. And some of the shots that he's taken would have put down and kept down many a fighter. Something that might help Marroquin is not only does he fight at 122, he's also fought at 126. Definitely taller than Rigondeau. 5'8 against 5'5. Five five. He's tall for this weight class. He's big for this weight class, so which makes it even more that much more impressive what Rigondeau is able to do. And there's a looping. Right hook by Rigondeau, and another one, followed by a straight left. He's so quick. One of the hooks landed on top of the head, the other right on the jaw. Very, very talented fighter. Let me ask you, Jaime, the fight between him and another great um, top-ranked fighter, Juanito Demer, who would you give the betting price to? Well, that is just something that everybody's been salivating to see, and I think Rigondeau, probably because of his speed, would get the edge. Let's go, kid. They're pleading with him at this point. I mean, 
We are now at the ninth round, and your decision, I think, is safe to see is out of the question. And Marokin's starting to look a, a little busier, and he really has to just let his, his hands go. But it's hard when you're going up against a fighter who's like, an NFL quarterback who just happens to see the whole field and sees these punches coming from what appear to be a mile away and he's just so so relaxed in there and he has an answer for everything you throw at him. Difficult to go for broke. When you throw any type of shot, your opponent answers with three or four and they all land. And that's been pretty much the story so far between Guillermo Rigandau, the champ, and Roberto Marroquin, who's been game, but maybe showing too much respect for the Cuban. Well, he's taken some large, some hard, big shots. So it's, it's e a lot easier set the time in the corner spot when they want you to be a little bit more aggressive because you know what uh, the result could be when you let those hands go. Nevertheless, he knows what he's here for. This is a great platform, an opportunity that he's given, so he should maximize and go for broke. Oh, beautiful, beautiful left strike. hook by Marroquin and yeah, staggers Rigondeau. And Robert Bird telling him Marroquin that he can't do that well. They're on the clinch, and that Mario may have given a few extra seconds to Rigondeau, who may have needed it after that left hook. Jamie, you know what I've noticed is, I mean, pardon me, you know what I've noticed is that Rigondeau is obviously so incredibly hard to hit, but if you are, if you are able to connect, I don't know how well he takes that punch when we talked about the uh, uh, the potential super fight with him and Onito Donaire. If Donaire is able to connect with heavy, heavy hands, yes. I don't know. That's something that, you know, may be one of the weaknesses of Guillermo Rigondeau. Maybe. We hardly ever see him get hit, but the couple times that Marroquin has been able to find success and find a home for that punch, he's managed to buzz him. And like I mentioned, that's what he said. He's been working on that left hook, and that's the one that staggered Rigondeau in this round. Maybe giving Marroquin a little bit more confidence. Trying to go forward. Trying to find that same spot where he can let his hands go and connect once again. But Rigondeau, very quick and gets out of any problematic situation. Behind it, this is the time when Marroquin needs to step on the gas. He really needs to take advantage of this opportunity. Maybe he doesn't have all his legs under him, even though it looks like he's fine. He really, really needs to press the action. That worked in Rigondeau's favor. And we're into the championship rounds now. Start of the 10th round here at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Alongside Mario Lopez, I'm Jaime Mota. On what's a terrific card put together by Top Rank. And we're seeing one of the best 122 pounders, the two time Olympian Guillermo Rigondeau, against the young but game Roberto Marroquin. 22 and 1 with 15 knockouts. But so far, the experience of the two time gold medalist a bit much for Marroquin. I do like that Marroquin has not completely succumbed to the brilliance of the Admiral Reagan after being caught with a, a few uh, uh, hard shots. He's still coming forward. I feel he could still be a little bit more active, but he's had flashes of success. Now using that jab to keep Marroquin at bay and also time that left hand. That's opened up a slight cut over the right eye of Marroquin. And it's the same left hand that's dropped him already in. He's had solid shots with that straight left. All night, all night, and he keeps it right by his chin as opposed to his right hand, and that's why he's got uh, caught with a couple left hooks, and that was another nice solid jab from Marroquin. Marroquin, with a lot more head movement, really, really needs to let his hands go to maybe match the success of the last round. And Rigondeau also uses that jab not only to go to the head, but the body, just to make sure 
that Marroquin is aware that he can go anywhere with that jab. Makes him think a little bit more. And then from there, he can not only throw that left hook, but the straight left. We see that right there. The Cuban school of boxing, maybe one of the best in the world. It, it, really, it, no, it really is. And if you have a long, extended amateur career in Cuba, odds are you're fundamentally incredibly sound and pretty much just seeing every style out there. Last 20 seconds of this 10th round. Really? Marroquin, after having put Rigandau in trouble in the last round, hasn't done much, and there's a right hook and uppercut by Rigandau towards the end of the round. Landed flush on Marroquin. In Marroquin's corner, pleading with him. Two rounds left. You gotta step it up, son. You're fine. Let them hands go. I thought they'd give it, been giving an excellent advice on that. Under six minutes left in this bout, Guillermo Rigondeau on the left of your screen in orange and purple, Marroquin in black, but it's been all Rigondeau so far. Rigondeau has a nice left counter. I have it of sort of showing you the punch that he's about to throw, measuring you, and still catching you with it. <laughs> You've got quick hands like Rigandel. It's hard to get out of the way, and yeah, that's yeah. something that Marroquin has found out tonight. Marroquin trying to close the distance still, sort of abandon his jab. But at this point, I would be looking at pure power shots and a high activity rate. Well, he does have 15 knockouts, Marroquin does. So we do know that he has some power. Well, so does uh, Rigandel know that. Getting buzzed at least twice in this fight. But if he's gonna do anything to come out of here with the belt, he's gonna have to let his hands go. And not only be a counter puncher. And right now, Rigandel is the one pressing the action with the hands down. Meanwhile, it's Sergio Martinez. It is, I mean, ironically, yes. The sounds that you hear are the Argentinian fans uh, acting as if they were in a, a World Cup Saturday game out here, really getting behind their man Sergio Martinez, which this will be the largest stage Martinez participates in, so I'm sure that will go a long way in the veterans' career. Once again, Marroquin throwing that left hook. It landed, but not with the same amount of power that in the last couple rounds when he staggered Rigandau. And blood flowing from Marroquin's nose now. Cut on the eye, cut on the nose. And now Rigandau is just making him look bad. Moving very well, very quick of foot. He's a surgeon in there, but you know what? His hands are down like this, and he gets a little too relaxed. That's when he got caught this last time. Obviously, we're coming quickly, but... He does have the power to make a difference on shot. And there's that straight left, landing once again right on the nose. Left followed by the right uppercut. And Marakim just can't land. Six rounds, so... But both definitely have the power to do it. And that's what Roberto Marroquin is going to need here in the 12th and final round to be able to walk away with the victory. Well, his corner was extremely uh, honest with him saying, you need a knockout, son. Will he let his hands go? Will he go for broke? Or will he let Rigandau finish painting this masterpiece? Uh, all he needs to do is box him, make sure he doesn't get caught with anything. And you, oh, oh, and as you said, it, I know. there it goes down Marroquin. He gets up rather quickly. 
But that was a beautiful combination by Rigondeaux. Can Rigondeaux end, um, end this fight with another knockout? It would be four in a row. And there's a little under two minutes left, so a lot of time to close out strong. Lands again with a right hook, measuring with the jab, looking for that power punch. And Marroquin walking into a counter right hand and beautiful left hook thrown by Rigondeaux. Beautiful combinations now, landing at will from Guillermo Rigondeaux, tapping upstairs, downstairs, and really go for the knockout, wanting to end this show in a big way. He sees the end near, does Rigondeaux going forward. Even the jabs make Marroquin's head go backwards. There's a good right hand by Marroquin. Maybe a little bit too late. Marroquin's face showing the worst for wear for the night. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be him tomorrow. Ooh. But once again, Rigondeaux seems to be content with just boxing and letting this go to the end. And therein lies the frustration. He had his fighter hurt numerous times tonight, had him on the canvas yet here in the 12th round, and still does not go for the jugular. That is the one knock against Rigondeaux. And he lands that beautiful straight left. And that's us being extremely meticulous, just because we want and expect so much from such a talented fighter. Well, there are things that you have to nitpick about when you have An such embarrassment a complete, of riches, right? <laughs> such a complete fighter. Bring it down, landing again with the right hook. Final 10 seconds of this championship fight. And there is no doubt who the winner will be. Gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Glenn Feldman scores it, 118-108. Robert Hoyle, 118-108. And Ricardo Ocasio, 118, 109, all to the winner by unanimous decision. And still, WBA Super Bantamweight World Champion, Guillermo El Chacal Rego.